Uh, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. It's my first time in the hackathon. Uh, so thank you very much uh, to all of the participants because you will contribute to some of the challenges regarding uh, COVID-19. Uh, I am Clara Prats and I belong to this Biocom SC, Computational Biology and Complex Systems Research Groups at the UPC and I'm presenting the challenge on behalf of my colleagues at the Valdebron Hospital and Copedicat. Uh, slide. Uh, so what's Copedicat? I guess most of you know Valdebron, uh, most of you know that uh, we have some different uh, research groups at the UPC. Copedicat is a very, very nice project, uh, which is a, a network of more than 100, 120 pediatricians around the whole Catalan territory that are working together trying to answer some of the most important questions regarding COVID and children. They have been working on transmission, for instance, and they are now working uh, hard in order to, to better uh, determine the, the classic symptoms of COVID in, in children. Slide. So, uh, children and COVID, what do we know? Uh, in the case of symptoms, we know that uh, in general, well, uh, let me start by saying that in March, we know nothing about children and COVID, but that on June, we know still nothing about children and COVID because we closed them up at home. So they were not in contact with, uh, with the epidemic. So uh, we are a little bit later than, than uh, the knowledge about adults. Uh, we know that children are less symptomatic in general, or that if they have symptoms, the symptoms are mild. But what are the symptoms in children? Are they the same as adults? Actually, we know that they are not. So how can, I, how can we characterize the, the COVID in children? And how can we distinguish a, a COVID uh, from other respirata respira respiratory infections, in, typically in children like flu, bronchiolitis, a cold, etc. cetera? Slide. Uh, at the end, what uh, we would like is to reduce the number of PCR samples or of antigenic tests, uh, samples that we must obtain from children because it's a quite aggressive test. So the less, the better for them. Slide. So this is the context. Uh, okay, we know that clinical things or symptoms are associated to, to uh, several virus, uh, respiratory, respiratory virus infections are non-specific. And uh, in particular, they are very similar between them. And here, this kind of, of, of consecutive peaks is uh, the history of like, last uh, five years in terms of two classic epidemics in children, which are uh, the bronchiolitis in red that increases each autumn and decreases and increases in the autumn and decreases again, and the flu, which is in yellow. Okay, So for the next year, we expect a third peak, which will be uh, COVID. So during autumn and winter, the three uh, diseases will meet in the healthcare symptom, uh, in the healthcare uh, centers. So it would be really, really useful uh, to have tools to distinguish between uh, one kind of infection and the other one. Slide. So we have two questions. The first one for this challenge is uh, given a set of symptoms in a pediatric uh, child, in a pediatric patient. So I'm a doctor, I'm a pediatrician, a child comes to, the, to my uh, health center and he reports cough or he reports fever, he reports fever and headache. Uh, he has a normal auscultation. So if he has a, a certain set of symptoms, can this uh, set of symptoms be uh, possibly uh, indicative of COVID positivity? Or even more important, is it this set of symptoms, this pattern typically of non-COVID uh, infections? So we, I shouldn't take the sample, okay? So first, given a set of symptoms, can I provide a kind of score or a probability for this child to be COVID positive or negative? And the second one uh, is the, the, the knowledge or the, the, the typical pattern or the typical characterization of uh, these uh, this children, these positive children, okay? So, which is the most useful, usual uh, pattern of symptoms in COVID positive child, children, sorry, slide. Uh, the data that you will have is a set of more than 1,600, I think almost 1,700 1, almost, of cases, of individual cases, all of them are children uh, that have been gathered during the last uh, month and a half in around Catalonia. 
And for each of them, you will know the sex and the, the age, but also the presence of or and absence of a very long list of symptoms of a 40, uh, a list of 40 different symptoms. Okay, for each of them, is this symptom present or absent? Okay, and then for each of the cases, for each of the registers, you will find if this was finally PCR positive, if this was file finally. RAT, RAT means the rapid antigenic test uh, positive, which is another way to determine the positivity, and or if it was finally negative. Okay, slide. The tools that you should uh, use for trying to answer these questions are uh, artificial intelligence uh, tools, data science tools, or to create new algorithms that you can imagine in order uh, to try to, to determine uh, which symptoms or sets of symptoms are predictors of either a positive or a negative case, uh, trying, if possible, to provide a score or a probability, and uh, also, as important as, as the previous uh, points, to explore ways of, ways of visualizing these, uh, these results, okay, of, of uh, uh, showing the conclusions of this challenge that must be uh, understood by pediatricians that will have to, uh, to apply the, your, your findings here. Slide. So nothing else uh, from, uh, from me, just uh, to, to say good luck and thanks for your participation.